Hello, everybody. I am Matthew Miller. I am the Foot Art Project leader. I have been doing this for a insane six years. Um, and I've spent probably a total of one out of six of those years burnt out over the time, which is pretty good for a Fedora project leader. Ben, do you think that's, I see you're making a face at me. It might, might be a little uh, higher than that. Tienes un licton de limón. Del pequeño grande. Are you talking to us? I think he's talking to a child. Uh, um, no, um, actually I'm in the in a store, sorry. Oh, <laughs> can you temporarily mute yourself? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, uh, Fedora project leader. I've been involved in Fedora for a long time, and I'm taking too much too long for my introduction because I think I there's a lot of out about me out there already. If you don't know who I am, ask me later. All right, I'll go next. I am uh, Marie Norden, Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I've been in this role for less than a year. This is first uh, flock nest uh, conference that I'm planning for you guys. So I'm really excited about this one. And I'll tag uh, David next. Thank you. Uh, I am David Cantrell and I am uh, one of the FESCO members. And I also am the engineering uh, representative or liaison to the Fedora Council. Uh, for Fesco and I guess Fedora as a whole. Um, I've been involved with Linux and open source for a long time. I'll leave it at that. Um, Alexandra. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Alexandra. I'm new here. And uh, I was uh, elected in council a month ago. So I'm really new here. Before that, I was on Fesco and like I was in Fedora for more than 10 years already. And I'll pick Ben. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Cotton, the Fedora Program Manager. You may me from sending you a whole bunch of email. Uh, I've been a Fedora contributor for about 10 years, 11 years now. And this is uh, just over two years in the Program Manager role now. And I'll throw it to Justin. So I'm Justin Flory. I've been a Fedora contributor since about 20, late 2015, where I first was part of the community operations team and the diversity and inclusion team. Since then, I'm currently involved as the team representative liaison from the diversity and inclusion team to the council. Um, but I also uh, am a part of the i3 SIG, where we're working on building an i3 uh, spin for Fedora. And also, I maintain a few packages of my own. So I will throw it to Nick. Muted. Okay. Uh, I'm Nick B. Bout. I've been involved with Fedora for a long time now. Um, I help with packaging and uh, some sysadmin stuff and mindshare committee and things like that. Uh, Edward, I think you're the only one left. Oh, great, because I don't know who else is there. Uh, hi, my name is Eduardo Lucena. I'm the Mind me not there. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Eduardo Lucena. I'm the Mindshare representative right now. I'm being a user from 10 years, contributor from for two uh, four years now. I start and come up a little bit then for marketing and then just jumping from IRC channels and try to gather people into the marketing stuff. And I'm the manager of representative science a month ago, probably. Cool. Um, now, now what? <laughs> people ask us questions and we answer them. Yes. Excellent plan. I did say we could uh, just, you know, make stuff up for 30, 40 minutes or whatever, too. So what's this council thing? What is All the right. council? Yeah, I'll take that one, um, especially because we have a lot of new people here. Uh, so I think this is, is actually a good topic. Um, long ago, Fedora was governed by a board and 
um, and then had a Fedora project leader, and then not much structure at all to anything. And that worked okay, but it was hard to set kind of an overall strategic direction and kind of then try and aim the whole project towards a thing that we wanted to do. And that sometimes meant that a lot of um, you know our mailing list discussion slash arguments ended up going nowhere with no resolution. And we didn't really have the ability to make big steps forward in a way that was controlled. And since Fedora is about making big steps forward, that kind of became problematic. So we instituted a new governance structure with kind of a more hands-on approach and with an actual org chart underneath it rather than um, chaos. Um, and it has generally worked pretty well. We have a number of appointed people, um, which are paid positions by Red Hat. That's me, Marie, and Ben. We also have um, elected positions. Um, Alexandra and uh, Dennis Gilmore is currently that. Uh, and then we have some positions that are um, brought to the council by important uh, representative bodies in Fedora. So um, David is here representing Fesco and Justin is uh, representing diversity and inclusion, and Edward is representing the Mindshare Committee as well. Um, and this, yes, that, that's the overall picture. If you're muted in a QA session, are you muted in real life? What is real life even, Ben? <laughs> What is Zero Fedora in the long term view? I would love for someone other than me to answer that question. <laughs> well, I sit here and sip. Well, for me, until now, I see that uh, Fedora is continue to try to drive innovation into this into the false world, into the free open source world. Uh, Although by the help with Red Hat, there's a lot of people that still fears about the IBM with Red Hat. But until now, we are doing it uh, as we can as community. And the community is the, the, the Fedora project. The Fedora project is not the OS that we, uh, that almost all we use. I'm using Android right now because I'm on my phone. But the Fedora project is uh, the people. So Fedora will continue to be the community that it is now, no matter what. I have slightly different and uh, more about the future of RPM packaging in the generally like uh, Linux distributions, because uh, I came from DevOps background where people try to say that packaging doesn't matter anymore and the new DevOps ways are doing it differently. And I strongly disagree with that. I think that all DevOps ways will just evolve towards uh, something similar to what packaging does right now. And it's either it will be us with RPM packaging there, or it will be something else but will which will act the same way. So I see the future of Fedora is like uh, developing further the approach to packaging, the approach to uh, the culture of maintainers, the culture of community uh, owning some space where you can share the resources uh, rather than just consume stuff. So I see Fedora becoming like the pool, uh, RP packages becoming the pool of uh, these packaged um, boxes, like uh, small stuff. So it, everyone can use this uh, to build their own solutions, but it all comes back to these basics basic bricks which you need to use to build something larger in the end and, and bigger and, and more interesting maybe to some people but yeah we're still the foundation of it all i'd like to see a future fedora uh that you know kind of leads community and diversity and inclusion and um we could build up more of our demographics i think we all know the split right now. I'd like to see more ladies and Black, Indigenous, and people of color involved in Fedora um, all over. So that's something I hope that we can accomplish. I want to say that we are such beautiful dreamers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Good for but us. You need to dream what drives you. Uh, I remember uh, yeah. my path towards open source started when a uh, long time ago. And, and uh, at that time, I was reading some blog articles and uh, it was Jared Smith, actually, uh, who wrote the article, a former Fedora project lead. And he wrote something like, in open source, you really need to be bold, you know? You, you, you need to just start doing and do that, and eventually you get somewhere. And uh, there is nothing else just to be bold enough to, to try, and, and then we'll see. Uh, this is kind of a quick one. Would like to, uh, what's the state of the new Fedora logo? Unless someone else had something to add to that last one, I realized I just jumped in. The state of the Fedora logo, should I talk about that? All right, so basically it's in legal right now, still, and uh, we have to make a couple more iterations. As we all know, uh, the F is <laughs> close to the Facebook F, so. Legally, it's a, you know, a trademark that's owned by Red Hat. So they're quite involved in this process. So we're doing our best, but uh, it's going to be a long timeline. That's just the truth of that. Sad face. Yep. Um, don't, don't look at the logo on my avatar. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, and then this one seems like a good one. Maybe the council would like to talk a bit about what they've been doing over the past year. Sending email, reading email. Um, you know, one of the things I've been focused on is trying to, you know, I think we have some good processes in terms of, you know, program management stuff, but there are a lot of rough edges or corner cases that we haven't addressed. And so I've spent a lot of time trying to, to polish that what we have. I'm always cooking. That's not a question <laughs> people have. Um, so like, I mean, we just, we just have, I mean, it's just now have a process for promoting things to addition because we haven't done that in a while. And then we tried that with IOT and realized we didn't, we missed a lot of, uh, a lot of steps that we probably should have done. So we're, you know, just basically trying to figure out and document uh, all the things we work on. Has anyone else been doing stuff in the last year? <laughs> <laughs> I you know I've been doing stuff all over. It just seems so interwoven. Like I'm like, wait, was that a mindshare thing or a council thing? I um, think we can count it as. All, uh, all of these uh, activities right. under the umbrella of council. Right. And right. So one thing I've been doing that I actually used to follow the council is like code of conduct stuff. That takes up a lot of time uh, yeah. for community manager and for project leader. It takes up a lot of our time because, uh, you know, we have to read that, process that, do get all the background and then, uh, gather gather more information, maybe talk to people about it, then potentially go to our legal team. Then yeah. it could be and multiple it's often legal. making very hard decisions about difficult things, yeah. right? Yeah, it's sensitive things, yeah. and we want to keep everyone's um, inclusion in mind and make sure it's fair for people and, you know, make sure it's safe for people. So it actually, that's uh, something that's taken up a lot of my time in the last five months. There, there's a reason I put that slide in the... Yeah, keynote. It's, it's <laughs> absolutely. Uh, another cool thing I've been doing is the ambassador revamp uh, proposal. You know, kind of getting all of this feedback from the community on a couple mailing lists. The the conversation popped up again, and I said, you know what, this is the time to make a change with this. So I took that feedback and I made a plan, and and we got feedback, made changes. Um, we're in just the beginning, the beginning process of that, but it's pretty sweet. We got two co-leads and we have a small group of volunteers kind of gathering up. And after Nest is over, it's going to be some beginning meetings. So I'm really excited about that. I can talk a little bit for the last. Dennis, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Oh. Oh yeah. Sure. Sorry, I'm late. I had a work meeting that ran over twenty minutes, and yeah, just what you want on a Friday afternoon. Um, Happens. It does. So I'm Dennis Gilmore. I am one of the two elected members of the Fedora Council. Um, I was for about a decade the Fedora release engineer, and now working on multiple architecture stuff inside of Red Hat. on Fesco and been heavily involved in Fedora for many, many years, so that's me. Justin, did you want to go ahead? Yeah, so just to list a little bit on my side to the earlier question of what I I've had been a up question to, so... that is not from me because I am oh, not the process Edward, a little bit. Justin's Edward. in the middle of talking. Oh. oh, sorry, I wasn't hearing there anyone. There might be a delay oh. there. There's a delay. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a delay. Okay. Um, so it was just around, so really thinking about volunteer sustainability and making making and helping keep it a, a place where we like to contribute to Fedora, even if it's not something you work on all the time. Or um, So really like one example of that is earlier this year on the Fedora badges side, which has always been this kind of community lots of community cont contributions to that project through the design side, but also through the software side. We've been working on uh, with some folks and friends um, at Concentric Sky who are also have been building the same open badge spec. We're looking at trying to refresh the Fedora badges uh, web app, not just to make it easier and more simple to work with, but also to be more creative with ways that we use it to make, you know, kind of always do these fun things that we do in the, in the Fedora community as another tool to make it a, a going back to like the friends part of the four foundations. So that's kind of like a community project that has been related to some of the conversations we've been having in the DNI team. And I'm really excited to even at even at Nest, there's been a couple of talks already about that work that was done through the last outreachy internship um, on the Fedora badges stack. So it's really great to see that progress starting to move forward. But other than that, I'm really I'm really interested on or the, the DNI team has been having a lot of conversations about how we can uh, set ourselves up to be more sustainable and also be better at bringing in and onboarding new contributors. So a lot of our conversations right now are really trying to think, think about ways that we can engage better with the Fedora community and be a better conduit for feedback and uh, being a part of the process in whether it's part of the Fedora Council or other parts of the project that would like that DNI perspective. That's part of what when I when I stepped up for the the representative role, that was something that I was really interested in of trying to spend my time and focus on over the next one or maybe two releases. So that's kind of a little bit of what I'm looking at and what's been going on for the last few months and my side of things. Do we want to go over the question? Sorry, trying to, to message my internet provider on Twitter in the background here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is Fedora going to have us focus? Oh, what is Fedora going to focus on for the upcoming years? anything particular fun or making the distro better or both? Is it the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> like making nice. distro better in a very funny way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, we want to focus on making our um, internal services we provide to our distro builder people better, both the people you know, making things like the um, Comp Nero spin or Fedora Jam, um, things like modularity, which I know is is rough, but is um, it, it basically ultimately a tool to make it so that you can take all these packages and put them into something that solves a problem for somebody uh, and continue to make the high quality collection of package software uh, that is you know, the main Fedora 
RPM collection and to continue to increase the quality of that and our skill at um, automating that packaging and making that those things available to people um, so that we can grow the community through these other uh, interesting Fedora outputs. Like Fedora Llama Spin. Like Fedora Llama Spin. Uh, our Fedora uh, former F-Cake was very excited about having llama farmers um, use Fedora for some reason. <laughs> I think uh, one initiative wor worth mentioning for this particular part is also the like simplification of uh, building the images which can be used in on various infrastructures. This is this there will be a talk about this I think even tomorrow or maybe on sun Sunday about uh, decoupling like the building of the ISO image from building the distribution uh, packages and so uh, giving more flexibility for the user to uh, play with uh, various images on various target platforms so not just considering ISO image alone for the applications. So it's in general, it's adding the flexibility, how you can apply Fedora on various setups and for various use cases is a very interesting development. Uh, what's going in, in the Fedora project right now? I'd also, think, uh, oh, go ahead. sorry, I'd like to add, um, there are many changes going in. Um, I know Ben mentioned, uh, that this most recent uh, development cycle has more changes, uh, change proposals approved than we've ever had. Um, so that's both good and bad because uh, it means we're <laughs> probably gonna have a lot more testing and, and cleanup to do, but uh, it's, it's good because it's what we wanna do in Fedora moving things forward. And I think that in the coming year, we're gonna continue seeing a lot come from the workstation um, sort of addition of Fedora and because we've already seen a lot of really nice improvements there for end users, uh, for, uh, I mean, laptop users for lack of a better term. Uh, and I think we're going to continue seeing that. Um, Matthew, uh, I'm, I'm sure you mentioned the um, Lenovo uh, uh, Fedora pre-installation. So perhaps, uh, you know, that being successful will uh, be you know, great for the project. Maybe we'll see more uh, in the future. I have no idea. I'm not involved with any of that stuff, but I think we'll see a lot of that, uh, which will be of interest to many users and developers. That's in addition to the things that we continue to see uh, happen in Fedora, which are changes and development procedures that allow Fedora to continue to act as an effective upstream for the projects that rely on it. Um, those projects primarily being CentOS and RHEL. Uh, so we... <laughs> this is actually additionally to that, I, I, I'm glad to see now the existence of other communities in Fedora, not just uh, CentOS and RHEL. And right. I think it's very important and I would love to see more. Uh, so uh, we become not just uh, one uh, distribution, but uh, reach out to wider areas and, and uh, we can be uh, used as a platform for many different uses, not just one and alone. And this, of course, it creates uh, additional challenges because the more people with different backgrounds come, the uh, more complicated it is to like talk to each other and to find the decisions. But this is where it becomes interesting. And this is where we need to show the strength of, of a process we have and, and, and the community uh, which we work with. Yep. I have a vision for the future of the next year, which is getting really good at virtual events. We are going to have access to this hop-in platform for a year. So let's take advantage of it. We're gonna formalize some kind of process so that folks can propose that. I'm thinking about Fedora activity days. I'm thinking about local meetups uh, in your time zone, um, you know, you're in the session right now, think about it and think about what you could potentially do with it. People reach out to, to get some of this <laughs> access to this platform? Do, do we have a... Right. So that's going to be a process that we establish. So right now, uh, working on a contract within OSPO with Hopin. And within all that, there became like a lot of red tape. So right now we're, we're on Apache's 
account very graciously. Uh, so once we have like access to the other one, we could talk more about how that's going to work. But I mean, as long as the event isn't, I'm pretty sure you can run as many events. There is some cost as far as each person. It's like a registration fee. And then there's also a cost that we're going to share with um, OSPO and some other communities, right? So like, yep, oh, yep, Rich, you're welcome. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's a process that will be formalized. I think we should get really good at doing virtual events. And we have this platform to, to use and learn about. There's a bunch more questions in the chat. The next one I think was how objectives and new features are selected to be included in Fedora. Um, we just talked about objectives at our last council meeting and, and the process for this right, right before this. Um, generally, uh, by our, our charter, selecting the objectives is our actual main function as the Fedora Council. And we try to have two of them running at a time um and work uh and they go for 12 to 18 months um every time we go through this we're getting better at the process for doing it as that as that happens so we try to make sure that there are actionable things that can have a defined end time and we try to provide as much support to that as possible um but generally once a proposal is there the process is do we have a strong lead for that proposal? Um, and then does it fit with where we're trying to go at you know, Fedora right now? Does it go to our long-term goals? And is it the, the thing we need to do now to get there? And if so, yes. Uh, so that's for the kind of the big objectives things. For, for changes, um, I will let Ben answer that, especially because my internet. Yeah, so for technical changes within a release, the process is basically somebody decides to do it. Uh, they fill out a page on the wiki. I send an email to the development mailing list. It goes through a, a community comment period, basically. And then it goes to the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee or FESCO for approval. So it's generally like a two-ish week process end to end if everything goes well. A lot of times FESCO will have questions and they'll want um, you want clarifications on certain things. Sometimes proposals get rejected because there's, uh, you know, it's either not good for the distribution or it's not um, not clear enough what the, the impact is going to be. So it's basically, a, you know, go do some more homework and come back and fix it. Um, but then we track the progress of those throughout the release cycle and make sure um, that things are still on track to make it into the release and um, actually here in a week or less than a week, I guess, is the, the first checkpoint for that, where we'll go through and make sure things are in a testable state. And if not, then they may get dropped to the next release. I think it's worth like mentioning that uh, at this point we are right now, the main obstacle for the change or for the objective is not console nor FESCO, it's usually you're fighting against uh, the time or resources you need to spend on the objective or on the change. So if you want to change, there's literally no obstacles other than uh, the commitment you need to do uh, to make this happen uh, and to clarify the details so this change doesn't break too much, but uh, it's still like there is no policy which forbidden you certain change to do certain changes uh, it's more about are you ready to deliver this change and to work on that and figure out all the details and figure out all the obstacles on, on technical side which may prevent this change from happening so it's open and i, I just think it's a really interesting question too just in terms of how objectives are kind of the vehicle, one of the many vehicles for how things get done in the Fedora project. So whether it's objectives or changes or additions or working groups or SIGs, these are all just different ways that we get things done in Fedora. But the question that usually comes after is like, once you have these, you know, you have an idea that you think, oh, this could be a great change or a great um, new addition proposal, something like that. Um, 
the question really comes after is what is the community interest and engagement around those ideas and well what are what are people really interested in doing um and the challenge one of the challenges with it is it's never a black and white process and sometimes it's really confusing because fedora is pretty good about being first on getting but we also require freedom first and we also are considerate of the needs and and uh, needs and perspectives of our Fedora friends from all around the world too. So the thing I think is unique about this is the process is very open to feedback. And I just want to highlight some of Ben's um, somewhat recent uh, improvements to the policy change process and the council. If you dig into the council docs, you can actually see that there is a policy on how to change policy in the council. And it's a really interesting window into um, Kind of how how some of that happens and you know as far as the you know the question is like how do things you know who who make who makes the the big decisions like how do these how do these big decisions get made in fedora um a lot of it is already in the in the open in this way and uh, i think one thing that's also interesting is you know it does that that whole idea does depend on the idea of mer the meritocracy or that you know where it's a very mer meritocratic approach but I think that looking at this at like the recent Devel discussion on, you know, the Nano and Vim text editor change, it was just a very interesting um, example to me of how folks were really interested in how do we make, you know, even if this isn't the tool that everyone everyone wants to use, what is a way that we can make our default distribution more accessible to people who are newcomers or people who are new to the system? So. Um, I just I've, I've always really admired that about Fedora and a lot of the things that we don't think about a lot, but we build on like the four foundations, even things like the Fedora project contributor agreement, which gives us a lot of really great flexibility and like um, how our contributions are, are trusted to the project. I kind of rambling now, but I just think it's a question that's always I've really had a lot of interest in Fedora and it's really interesting because not a lot of folks are doing it the way that we're doing it and we're we're pretty good at being first at these things. Are we ready for a new question? All right, what is the Fedora silver blue status and also status of the other DEs? I only heard half of that question. What is the Fedora silver blue status and also the status of the other DEs? Um, so, uh, silver blue is still in progress. Um, you know, it's had, uh, especially I think with the uh, Lenovo thing coming out, um, and silver blue wasn't ready for that. Uh, the team has been putting a lot of work into traditional workstation, but silver blue is still in progress, and I still think it is the future. Um, the toolbox command that is the um, brings up a container environment for you to work in recently reached version 0.1. Um, it's been rewritten in Go and is no longer a crazy shell script. So uh, uh, it, it's making progress. And I think that a more interesting thing is going, thing going to come from there. Um, I know that there was a KDE version for other, other Ds of, of something like Silverblue called Kinolite. Um, and I don't know the status of that. I think the KDE community was doing that and it wasn't even close to an official spin or anything it's just people doing it on the side from the field uh like silver blue is usable on your workstation you can do and run you need to get used to the toolbox concept the flat pack concept and everything uh i know quite a nice community around this exists and so i think you just need to try it for yourself and take a look. If you like this approach, then uh, join the effort and participate. It's definitely usable on your daily uh, workstation already. Yeah, there are just some corner cases where um, like things are not quite worked out yet. And it's something we don't recommend to the general public quite yet because you have to be willing to be like oh i've hit my you know, i've hit a weird corner case i'm going to have to deal with this and that's not the experience we generally want for people to have with most of fedora uh, 
But if somebody says BTW, I use Arch, you can like say, I'll raise you one. I've got silver blue. <laughs> Ready for the next question? What do you all think about Open Sousa's work on creating an independent foundation within the context of Fedora governance? Ooh, I've got thoughts, but anybody else want to go first? Go ahead with your thoughts, Matt. All right. Well, so I guess the, the main thoughts are uh, there are sometimes when we're working through some of the legal things where um, some independence seems like it would be nice. Uh, I've been told in the past that um, some of the things that Red Hat would still be concerned about many of the things that are um, legal um, liability concerns for Red Hat, even if we are an independent uh, foundation, because we take so much funding from Red Hat that our independence um, could be called into question if there were something serious to happen. Um, so in, and, and I think that actually goes to my other part of that, which is I don't think we are really hampered by our, our structure and our independence and getting things done um, and uh, hampered by lack of independence um, in, in that sense. Um, and the only way it would really make sense to me is if we had at least one and probably several other major backers with the same kind of financial backing that Red Hat has to put into it. Otherwise, I don't see what a foundation would really be bringing us over where we are now. I, I, back when Fedora first came into existence, they, they looked at making a foundation and it ended up being not very feasible because Red Hat was the primary sponsor and there was not a bunch of other sponsors. In order to have that independent board, you really need to have multiple, you know, financially, multiple in, in, entities financially investing in the group. And without that, you get a lot of legal kind of weirdness. And, yeah. and here I should thank our sponsors. Oh, wait, sorry. And here it's work, yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe we'll be thanking sponsors in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the next one. What is the status of solutions as a goal? Are there clear metrics around building solutions and targeted experiences for users? Since I'm new, I'm uh, will be first to ask: <laughs> Is this question uh, refer referencing to something uh, actually happened in Fedora, or is it referencing some external notions? So I Good think question. this is referring to um, from a couple years ago when the council met in Minneapolis, and we, you know, it's basically the idea of not having this distinction between spins and labs and just basically you know putting everyone on more equal footing with solutions and the idea being that you know we build this kind of base fedora that the llama llama herder uh would be a solution um i would say the answer to that is we haven't really made progress on that other than saying agreeing it's a good idea uh, just because it's a really big hard problem to try and make happen and some of the os builder work that would really make it possible um, still needs to be done. Did we get through all the questions? We're only five minutes out from the end of the session anyway. Let's get let's get another question. Dusty says I'm open to have more financial investment in Fedora from other companies. Take it. <laughs> I 
That was a good comment. Yeah, we are also open <laughs> for more funding yeah. from yeah. all the sources. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Right, and, yeah. and, not, and not just <laughs> funding, <laughs> I mean, bring ideas. Ideas are cost money as well, like, you know. <laughs> and bring people to do the work in Fedora as well, because that's the big investment that Red Hat really puts in is just a a measured in you know tens of millions of dollars investment of people time every year into the Fedora project. Um, so that's um, that's what we'd love to see coming from other companies, and we're here for it. I feel like people have more time on their hands nowadays. You could convince them <laughs> to get into it. I'm just saying. Even beyond the, the financial sponsorship aspect, one of the things that I'd love to just highlight with Neil Gampa, as I see him doing it all the time, is just opening more bridges and conversations to other communities that are doing similar things and solving similar challenges that we are in the Fedora community and trying to bring those conversations together. Um, so I'm really hoping that's another thing is I'm looking forward to is more partnerships with other communities, even if it's not a uh, transaction, but just partnerships of, of interest and time, like time is, is a super valuable currency in itself. Right. So that's I think one thing I'm excited for. I just wanted to shout out Neil, because that's something I see him doing all the time. Because of Fedora uh, upstream commitment, I think we are in a very good position where uh, we are not competing on the level of distributions as much. We are actually collaborating with the upstream and we are doing our best to support the upstream. So it it's not like Fedora is doing things for Fedora and it's uh, Fedora is uh, willing to do things for everyone and we are welcome everyone and we also want to help everyone. So if you're a gentle user, it doesn't mean you we cannot work together on some common goal and some interesting tasks. So that's absolutely uh, Fedora way to work together on things beyond the Fedora distribution alone. In that, um, in that particular, I encourage a lot of people to that want to do things that you reach any of the people that you can know in the join SIG or in the marketing team or the design team or wherever, and try to do the stuff. I start the podcast without any idea how to do it. I just say, hey, I listen to podcasts. This could be interesting. And they say, okay, learn how to do it and let's do it. Like six or seven months ago, I say, hey, I like, re I really like in the i3 window manage manager. And uh, what about having something that have pre-installed that window manager and I don't have to rely on the desktop environment. And then we have, now we have an ISO and it's not done by me. I just put the idea out there and the people say, hey, we can do that and they start to work by themselves. So we encourage people to try to do the stuff. Do we have time for one more? Okay. Sure. Uh, the status, uh, what about the status of mentorship and how is mentorship growing? How can there be more proactive mentorship? This is a big question. Ask to the uh, person, uh, the OP is a mentor, as general mentor or ambassador mentor, because mentors could be a lot of things. I think they're meaning general mentorship. Let's see. Yeah. I think we had a conversation about it just yes, day before yesterday. So that's uh, the topic which we definitely think about. And uh, Marie has ideas on uh, how this can be worked on. So Marie can be adding <laughs> something with, to what <laughs> I say. But yeah. I also want to point out the aspect which I was thinking for quite some time, but uh, Mentoring, uh, it's, it's nice as is a dedicated program and dedicated mentors, but in fact, uh, we all as Fedora community need to do a little tiny bit of mentoring here and there to help each other to get on, on board to talk with new users. So, uh, 
dedicated mentor is a huge amount of work and I, I tried that for outreach. It's it's uh, a lot of effort. I wasn't a good one, uh, <laughs> definitely. But uh, I would su suggest like uh, also to everyone in the community to think about like, can you maybe spend some tiny bit of your time on mentoring someone else uh, in whatever environment you prefer, like there are like 100 social networks right now, 100 channels you communicate to the world, find your own tiny bit and do your job. And then Marie will talk about <laughs> the mentorship program. I have a couple different ideas. Um, definitely part of it is ambassadors and looking at that again and how we want to mentor new ambassadors and what what is an ambassador now in 2020 and it, i think it has to do more of that mentorship um piece right people want uh someone they know there so that's very helpful um i'm also an outreachy a coordinator slash mentor and it is a lot of work but i also find it to be fulfilling so for some people it could be fulfilling and you don't have to be a red hat or anyone else to be a outreachy mentor um, through through fedora that's something anyone can do um, and there is a, a good amount of time commitment but if it's something you care about it works it works well i have to call out of course like the join sig that do an amazing job of um you know reaching these new contributors that's where we send new contributors and they connect people and that's been working really effectively uh and yeah, even when I, I was like, you know, incorporating them in the community outreach, just making like even these small adjustments like, no, we work perfectly the way we are. And I'm like, you know what? Do your thing. It's a low effort. And anyone could hang out in that channel and help people just get to their way. There's no meetings. There's really, there's no tech, like formal responsibilities that hang out in that channel and direct people to the right, the right way. So, um, there's a lot of different things that are happening. I think it's going to grow. I'd like to, I'd like to see the education part grow as far as how to mentor and how to be a good mentor, just education in general, I think can help people with some of the skills that make a good mentor, right? Like having some empathy and um, being able to communicate well, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I'll, I'll stop talking. I've been talking for a while. Someone else can go ahead. Hard the internet. Also, we could be done. Just to kind of oh. build on that one thing that I always think is interesting and that I don't, that I, I always see in Fedora, but don't necessarily see in other communities is specifically in our summer, summer coding mentored projects community. Um, we have this really um, long, long trend of folks who have been students who end up becoming mentors and, and kind of continuing down not all the time, but just, you know, it's something that it's just a very interesting trend to see that I don't necessarily see in a lot of other communities where a lot of times, you know, the summer ends and then they, people go, you know, people go back to real life. But, you know, I, I just always think that's something that's interesting and unique about the Fedora community and is also a shout out to the great work with the join SIG and also folks like the poll and Sumantro who have really championed the mentorship pieces of the mentored projects. I think like for some interns that really get to engage, you know, they get that friends aspect. And I know like when I had my internship back in the day and I went to flock for the first time, that's why I was sticking around, you know, I met friends. So that's maybe one, that's, you know, one of our foundations and keys to success right there with interns. Yes. Sumatra is awesome. So are we all, all done? I guess people find it. us if they want to say hi after after nest after nest uh council <laughs> fedora council irc <laughs> yeah um and, fedora irc <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> right. you can find me all over mindshare design um fedora council mailing list is also a good place um definitely I think council. we talked about like um, setting something awesome. up on discussion for our project.org, but um, I don't think that is active right now for us as a group, but I'd be interested in that experiment at some point. Maybe worth mentioning the Fedora Social Hour 
where you can actually join and participate in informal conversation, less formal even than here, and just have some fun in some members of the council hang in there. And uh, yeah, you can participate. No, no need to uh, be shy about it. Right. And we try to do different things like we try to mix it up, you know, trivia, Pictionary, Mozilla Hub. So, you know, we try to make it a little interactive too. All right, I have another session to get to in a very little bit, so I'm going to head out. Thank you, everybody. Yep, thanks, Thank everybody. Yep. Happy nest. <laughs>